Let us look at some more limits at infinity and see if we can find some shortcuts. We've got a function here. Yet again, we've got the sketch, but we don't need the sketch. But we've got the sketch just to support what we're doing algebraically. As x goes to infinity, we see this graph as a horizontal asymptote at x equal to 0. So let's see. And it's similar for x equal to approaching minus infinity. But algebraically, I see the highest exponent I have there is to the power 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator with 1 over x to the power 3. Now, yet again, x is not approaching 0, so I can do that, and the limit value will be the same. So we've got 3 over x plus 2 over x squared divided by 1 minus 4 over x. Now we can work with this because every time I've got a, whatever the numerator is, the 3 or 2 doesn't matter, I'm dividing by x, x gets very, very large, so this fraction, these fractions all tend to 0. So my numerator tends to 0, my denominator tends to 1, so that limit value is 0. So we can see that on the sketch as well. But you need to be able to do it algebraically because we do not always have the sketch with us. All right, let's look at this one. Now, yet again, we can see from the sketch, as x goes to positive and negative infinity, this function is going off to infinity and to minus infinity. It's got a skewed asymptote there. Now the question is, how do we see this algebraically? Well, if we try the same technique as what we had earlier, by multiplying with 1 over the highest power, what we're going to get in the numerator is 1. In the denominator, we're going to get 1 over x minus 4 over x cubed. Now, what's happening here? Both of those fractions go towards 0. So this is not going to help. So we can't do this. This is not a legal algebraic operation. We can't substitute that limit. It's not going to get us anywhere. So what you need to notice is the numerator has a higher power than the denominator. The degree of the numerator is 3. The degree of the denominator is 2. So as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the numerator is going to grow much faster than the denominator. So what we're going to get is this has to go off to infinity, or if I go to minus infinity, it goes to minus infinity. But this limit does not go towards a specific number, so it does not exist. So let's look at the different cases we've had up to now and see if we can get some shortcuts. Now, if I have a function that's a polynomial over a polynomial, we've had a couple of them now, you can look back at those as well. If I've got this type of function, then if I look at the limit as x goes to positive and negative infinity, all I actually have to look at is the leading terms. Because they are the strongest. As x gets very, very big, they are going to determine what happens to this fraction. And when I look at the leading terms, if my numerator has an exponent larger than my denominator, we saw this in the last example, then that limit is not going to exist. If those exponents are the same, and we've seen an example like that, then the limit value is just the a value over the b value. If my numerator has a smaller exponent than my denominator, and we've seen an example like that, then my limit goes off to zero. So this is a shortcut. This is not algebraically done, but if you just want to get a quick intuitive idea of where the limit goes, you can use this shortcut. So we're going to use this now for these three examples. Now, yet again, you can do it algebraically, but for now, let's just see. This first one is going to behave exactly the same way as the limit as x goes to infinity of 4x cubed over 2x cubed. The numerator and denominator have the same degree, so what we know is this will just tend to 4 over 2, which is 2, 2. The next one, these are my leading terms. Even though it's not in the same order, those are my leading terms. The denominator has a higher power than the, de than the numerator. So in that case, my limit value goes to 0. And you can do it algebraically as we did in the previous examples. And the last one, my numerator has a higher degree than my denominator. So that limit does not 
exist. So we can see graphically how limit to infinity goes. We can calculate it algebraically. And here we have a shortcut just to help us if I want to have a quick idea and intuitive look at how limits behave as they go to infinity.